All right, guys, so here's what we're doing today. We're gonna take a look at the Ford Bronco and what I've learned about it in the month I've owned it and I've put about 1,200 miles on it. My last video that I did was documenting of you know what I've learned about this after a year and a half of ownership and it was my most popular video. So maybe you guys who are into the XLR kind of dig the Bronco thing. So let's take a look at what I've learned. So the Ford Bronco comes in all kinds of different trims and you can outfit them in all kind of different ways. Uh, it really is countless of what you can do. But one of the features that this particular one has is it has the Sasquatch package. And you can determine if it has the Sasquatch package, if it has that little dude in your little sticker, but then also it comes on 35 inch tires with beadlock capable wheels. So what the heck is beadlock capable? Uh, I had to do a little research and reading as to exactly what that means. And what I came up with is, you see here, you have this plate on the wheel. And you take these screws off uh, with your Bronco toolkit, And they come off. And then you have the ability to install an aftermarket uh, or OEM plate from Ford onto your wheel. And then they will become beadlock after that. But they cannot sell it to you as a beadlock because it's not legal to do so so they can only sell it to you beadlock capable it's going to cost you about 800 bucks to get the plate from ford that will make this a beadlock wheel another thing about these wheels the sasquatch coming on 35 inch tires uh, has a little bit wider fender here these things throw rocks like crazy so i know a lot of people love the look of the shorter uh or i guess thinner fender but my gosh these things throw rocks like crazy and if you look here that tire sticks out so i either got to get mud flaps or i'm going to get scrapes along my door and it's the same thing on the rear here and sometimes these tires from what i was reading on a forum these tires they get the rocks inside the grooves and they stick until you're going at high speed and they throw them for example my daughter last night she was sitting right here and it threw a rock and hit her right in the leg didn't hurt her, but <laughs> it stung. So these wheels, these stock wheels, they throw rocks like crazy. And I've also read and heard that there's an issue with the rocks getting on the wheels and somehow it throws it up at the windshield. So with the rocks coming in from the tires, I got stopped at a stoplight uh, by another gentleman who was next to me and he's like, hey, I got one just like you. And he was telling me that he's lost two windows since he's owned it over the last year because of his Bronco Sasquatch throwing rocks at his windshield and breaking them. He says it's a problem that they're working on. I know this thing throws rocks. I haven't had anything hit the windshield yet, but I, I think once it does, it will break. Has anybody else discovered this? Is this something that uh, is just we're going to have to live with? On the Ford Bronco, you can get a couple options of bumpers. You can get the Hardcore, uh, well, I wouldn't say hardcore, but you can get the modular bumper that is winch worthy and you can put a winch directly on it. It has uh, the lights, has all the other features. Uh, this one, though, it's kind of that middle ground. This one's called the capable bumper. I, for one, think it looks the best, but it's a little more difficult to put a winch on. I've read in the forums that some people, you know, have done it. But this particular model has the 2.7 liter engine. With the 2.7, you, you can't put a hidden winch down here because you're gonna block the intercooler. 
and if you do anything down there to block that, you may be voiding your warranty. So there's really not, from what I've discovered, a great option for the 2.7 liter with the, the capable bumper to put a winch on it yet. Hopefully that's coming. So if you want a winch, you're gonna have to add a different bumper. Also, if you got the tech package where you have the camera and the off-road system in the front, if you put a winch up here, that's gonna be blocked. So you'll have to relocate that. And so that's another thing that you'll just have to worry about and get the harness for and, and rework that. So it depends. If you want a winch in the front, it might be best not to get the capable bumper, even though I think it looks the best. The next thing is the top. I have the soft top on mine and I was able to get this vehicle because it has a soft top. The hard tops are very, very difficult to find. It's still in 2023. If you want a hard top, you're gonna have to wait. If you want your car, you may have to go get a soft top. Uh, good thing with the soft top is, it seems like it's pretty high quality. It's very easy to, to work. I can you know put it kind of like in a Sunrider position. Uh, uh, very simply uh, or i can bring it all the way back and it works very well it is a little noisier but it it works you know i i ride with the the doors off so wind noise doesn't bug me uh but i did contact ford and i'm like hey can i get on a waiting list to just buy a hard top from you from the factory and they don't even know the answer i just got was they're not sure how to do it um, they can order it for me in pieces and the pieces will come in totaling about $7,000, but that's excluding any of the hardware. So I would get the panels, the glass and everything, and basically would have to build my top for 7,000. There is one other aftermarket company that's selling a hard top that looks really clean, uh, for about $6,000. So right now it's a very hard time to get a hard top. I'm hoping in the future that it'll get a little bit better with time and more companies kind of jumping in and, and getting into it. All right, if you're interested in getting a tire cover for your rear spare to protect it from the elements, well, make sure you get one with the hole if you have the rear camera, which pretty much everybody does and they should be mounted here. Uh, make sure you get the one with the hole. Otherwise, you're not gonna work or you're gonna be cutting a hole through it. Also, with the Badlands, and the Sasquatch. One thing you get in the 2.7 liter is you get the bigger engine, but you also get the, the, the gear ratio. You get the 4.7 gearing, which is only coming from the factory on the Sasquatch. So if you don't do the Sasquatch from the factory and you want to put 37 inch tires or bigger tires on these, on this thing, you're going to have to do something about the gearing. Otherwise you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. There you go. Another thing to get this thing up, on the 35s on the Badlands with the Sasquatch is there's a crash bar here that they had to remove. If you go look at one without a Badland Sasquatch or without a Sasquatch, you're going to see a crash bar here that they've taken out. So a little bit of a safety feature that is now gone to give room for these 35 inch tires and for them to be able to fit in there. So this model has the marine grade vinyl and man, it is nice. It is comfy. It really does. I mean, you feel plush when you're in it. It's got uh, just a lot of cool features. With the Sasquatch, you get the you know the orange little stitching here. You got the Bronco logo in there. But good lord, sweet lord, is it hot? So it's like 90s right now. It's in direct sun. That's as long as I can keep it on the seat. So you put your little tushy on that. You are going to melt your butt it is a couple people have asked me when you take the doors off well how do you get rid of your electronics and here it is a little dust cap here uh you have your your uh, i guess hook in from your door that goes in there and then when you pull it it closes and that's it and then ford just has these two bolts here that you already have the tools for to take them off and they come right off and they even come with a handle under the door that says lift here so they're very easy to take off so here's the Bronco tool kit you come, that comes with the car. You open it up and you have your little tool set. It has all your uh, bolts in here. It has your uh, uh, everything you're gonna need to take your soft top off the vehicle, take your doors off. Uh, it has a little storage compartment so you can put your little bolts in there that come with your door so that they stay nice and neat. 
But one cool thing of this is, boom. I don't know if you can see that. Everything says Bronco. Even the sockets say Bronco. So these are pretty cool. You know, you, you got your car and your little tool case, tool case that says Bronco. And then it even has your little Bronco logo there. One thing that is surprising is this thing came with LED lights, but what I was watching other people's YouTube channels is that's not standard. You have to get an upgraded version or the technology upgrade to get that. So check this out. You got your LED. That looks awesome. However, that you have to upgrade for. It's, it's a really cool feature. They do light up at night. This thing has the auto brights, and I've never had that technology on a car before. So if you're driving down the, the road at night and there's no headlights detected, this thing will get brighter or it'll turn your brights on and it illuminates the entire road. And then when it senses a car coming close to you or in the distance, it dims them very subtly. Very cool. I know that some people may be used to that, but that was a really neat feature to, to discover. So here's what it looks like at the dash. This thing does have the upgraded screen. It's huge. Does a great job of uh, just showing you everything. Very bright. Um, here's what it looks like when it comes on. Here's what it looks like. There you go. All right, so here's what it looks like from the cockpit. I have the doors off, so it tells me so. Let's start it up. It goes on. But you have a really nice screen, a nice setup here. Oh, and that's your view coming out of the cockpit. Uh, when I first sat in this thing, it was way too high. And it was because you can pump your seat up or down. And when I pumped it all the way to the bottom, and I'm six foot, I can see right underneath this thing. But before it was like, uh, this ain't gonna work. I felt like I was in a Camaro. Cool feature that this thing has is it has the lane keeping system. Uh, I've never had a car that had that. It works pretty dang good. It keeps you in the lane. You just gotta put a little pressure on the wheel and if it reads the lines, it will keep you locked into your line. So on the road, this thing handles way nice. I mean, it's a very smooth car. It handles the bumps like like, like it should, um, but it's really athletic and sporty, but it, it, it does maneuver really well. And then it makes it just very, Here's your little plaque that says it was made in Michigan. Now it says here, I've seen some other people's posts. If you can't read it, it says design engineered in Dearborn, Michigan. However, oh, then it was built at the Michigan assembly plant. However, if you open up your stuff, the point of origin is not Dearborn. It is Wayne, Michigan. One cool off-road feature this thing has is you have your camera button here. You click it, and then you get all kinds of different options. You have your 360. This is from your front. Got a lot of stuff here in the garage. But then you can change it to where it shows you just like the, the whole front of the car. It uses your sides and your front. Or you can do just the front. Or you can look at that 360. But when you switch to your GOAT modes here, when you flip this, you can go to your different options. Let's go to, uh, there's Eco Slippery, Mud Ruts. Somebody told me once, oh, now it's shifting into four wheel drive. Oh, I flipped it into sand. And so it locked the rear diff here, it tells me so. And the different goat modes show me things, or it does different things. But somebody told me as you switch your goat modes that uh, it looks like ice cream scoops. So if you look at it again, there's your sand. Doesn't that look like a sandy ice cream scoop? And you have your Baja flavor. And then you got, lastly, your rock crawl. So when you put it in rock crawl, it's gonna go to your 4L. You gotta shift to neutral for it to do so. And it's doing it. All right, so now it turns your uh, advanced track off. And then what it did here is it Disconnected the front sway bar, and then it locked the rear diff. If I need a little more you know, pull, I can lock the front diff, and it will do it. And then this button here, that is the, uh, the turn assist, where it will lock the inside wheel, and I can turn the car very sharply off-roading. 
But one cool feature is when you're cruising down the road and you have this uh, on your front, you, you find yourself glancing at it to see, okay, where are my tires going to go? Because it places these things where your tires go. That's a really cool feature. So off-road wise, this thing has pretty much anything I'd ever want and then some. And then these hood mounts here. This car is unique. It has the hood mounts on both sides. And you can load up to 150 pounds on this thing. But also what I was reading is that they mark the inside of your tire here. So that when you're trail running, you know where the inside of your tire is going to be by using these as your guide. So, so you got some sights on your hood, which is pretty cool. Okay, one down thing to talk about this car is it's a very easy fix so i shouldn't even complain but i just need to get something to hold in these seat belts because when you're cruising with the top down and doors off they sit here and flat incredibly lap to the point where you just can't do it so even i thought well i'll just buckle them and then that will work but there's so much slack in this it was just whipping against the the, the seat and i didn't want it to mark it so my quick and easy fix was put the back seat, I like, is put the back seat down and then hook hook your seatbelt like this so that this is down and then when it's flapping it's not hitting anything and it's not making any noise. But I just need to get something that will hook on here. I'm sure they make something they could hook on here and you could clip your seatbelt in. But this worked well if you don't have anybody in the back seat. Once you have somebody in the back seat and they're buckled in, it won't be a problem. That, a question I have for the Bronco enthusiasts is the color scheme of this thing. It's unique. Uh, I got black rims, but I got the silver plate here. I got the black trim. I've got the yellow stitching here because of the Sasquatch. But now, if I was to get a Bronco logo, and I've seen several people do it, they look really sharp. What would look better? Should I go black or should I go chrome? Because in the back here, the Bronco logo is chrome. Actually, actually it's kind of like brushed, but it ain't black. But a lot of the features on this car are black. So... I'm kind of torn. Do I put chrome or do I go black? Another color variant on this car is with the orange, the black, the chrome, but then you also have white. And this ain't black. This is like a smoky gray. So there's lots of different color options on this car. So what do you do if you add anything to it? Do you go black? Do you go chrome, yellow, or orange for the Sasquatch and Badlands? What do you do? That, that's what I've learned so far that's been unique on the Bronco Badlands 2023 with the Sasquatch. It has been a super fun car. I would argue it is the coolest car I've driven because it's just, it's fun. The kids like riding in it because the doors come off, of course. And it's very simple to take the doors off. The way Ford did it, they did a great job with that. And the fact that you don't have to get another bracket, that they're side mirrors they're just mounted to the vehicle that is so handy i had a jeep wrangler i'll flash a picture of it loved it it was a 2000 sahara and i hated taking the doors off because that bracket was super annoying and you just want it to be very nice to put on and off and they really did a good job they even gave you the whole entire toolkit how to do that uh, but with that it's, it is one of the most fun vehicles i've driven I know it's new, of course, you know, most new cars are fun to drive. Uh, it is, it is a beast. So, been fun. Uh, there's going to be some upcoming videos. I have some plans to take this thing and do some fun stuff with it. There's a lot of good opportunity here in Central California. But one of my next videos, let me know if you'd like to see it. I want to compare the off-road capability of an old school 2008 Lexus LX and the new Bronco. A lot of people don't know how capable this car is off-road. And if you know, you know. And if you don't, you should know. Because it is pretty cool. So look for that coming up. But I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please hit us up. 
Uh, I'll try to give you anything answers I know, but I'm also following along with everybody else. So have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.